Welcome to Kansas Ag Report. I'm Ken Rogers. On this week's program, Don Close from Robo Agro Finance will join us. We'll talk about the ups and downs of the cattle market right now and some of his observations. We'll also have features from Kansas Soybean Commission, Kansas Department of Agriculture, and Kansas Grain Sorghum, plus our weekly update from the Kansas Livestock Association and market information from Pinion, a division of Keiko ISO. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers, Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farm and ranch families since 1919, kfb.org, and the Kansas Wheat Commission, lending in the adoption of profitable innovations from wheat online at kswheat.com. In agricultural news from agview.net, U.S. sorghum exports for the current 2021 marketing year moving at a rapid pace thanks primarily to rising demand from China. Shipments are expected to continue to be strong into the next marketing year, according to new analysis from USDA's Foreign Ag Service. The FAS estimates U.S. exports in the 2021 marketing year to total 7.8 million metric tons. That's a value of $2.4 billion. And that would be the highest total since 2015-16. The forecast for 2021-22 is even higher as they forecast U.S. will export about 9 million tons. More than 1.6 million tons of new crop have already been sold for export. And more than half of that is destined for China. In new survey, broccoli secured the number one spot yet again as America's favorite vegetable, followed by carrots, then corn. Green Giant's annual favorite veggie survey pulled more than 5,000 Americans. Although broccoli does remain America's favorite, the popularity of corn substantially increased over the last year. The survey found that 100% of consumers surveyed who picked broccoli as their favorite vegetable, noted taste as the top factor in making their selection. But from 2019 to 2021, the number of states that selected carrots as their favorite vegetable increased some 500%. Those selecting broccoli had decreased 23%. And compared to survey data from last year, seven times more states selected corn as a favorite in 2021. And while broccoli is America's favorite vegetable, According to the general population survey, corn is a runaway favorite vegetable among Americans 55 to 72 years old. Tomatoes and cucumbers, noticeable favorites last year, well, they need to make the favorites list for 2021. More news at agview.net. Stay with us. We'll have more after these words. The Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by Kansas Grain Sorghum. Growers working together. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com and agview.net. Serving the beef belt and western corn belt with reliable and relevant agriculture information. Agview.net. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. And joining us is Don Close, who is the Senior Vice President for Food and Ag Research and with uh, primarily animal protein with Rob Agri Finance. Uh, Don, uh, always great to have you on. Thanks. Thank you. Good to be with you. All right, let's talk about it. Robo uh, Agri Finance just came out with their latest uh, deep dive in the uh, beef uh, sector. Uh, it has been quite a roller coaster yet again, but uh, some of the issues we were dealing with over the wintertime, Don, haven't gone away. 
you know, it's, it's been longer since the winter time that the industry has been, been fighting over the, the market transaction type, the uh, price discovery and transparency deal, 20 years. And, and certainly the last two years, the market's been uh, absolutely at loggerheads. As much as anything, what I was trying to accomplish with this report is there just so much mis misinformation and outright falsehoods that are in the marketplace today. I tried to, to lay out a, the price history of the various transaction types and say, look, there is not the variation in, in prices to producers by transaction type that's been represented. We'll talk about that because I think, uh, you know, it seems like the coffee shop talk is, you know, we hear the morning and afternoon reports on box beef. We see what's being uh, getting at the uh, sale barns as well as what's uh, in some of those contracts. And the disparity is just one that really has folks in the countryside just up in arms and beside themselves and, and nobody seems to have an answer. I have, I have absolutely no disagreement with the level of frustration that currently exists in the marketplace. It's there. I think the thing that we have to look at is since our low point in U.S. cattle numbers in 2014, we added 6 million cattle to the U.S. inventory. 3 million of that was cows and then their offspring. During that same period of time, we have done virtually nothing to increase slaughter capacity. And in fact, we've had several setbacks referencing the Tyson fire, referencing the, the COVID disruption, the backlog of cattle associated with that. And so what that dry, it is just simply a leverage situation where at least temporarily, we have a larger fed cattle supply than what we've got slaughter capacity. And it's going to take a period of time to get that resolved. Now, as we said, U.S. cattle numbers peaked in 2019, and we have been contracting numbers for two full years now, going then we'll, we'll be three. And so we're just now to a point with the backlog of feed yard inventory, the backlog of cattle outside of feed yards due to COVID, is, is that that rat is working through the snake. And, and so I think with the, the May placement numbers, certainly the June placement numbers, we will finally be seeing the effects of the reduced placements that ourselves and, and other analysts have been promising producers for some time. Well, we hear of the drought up north in the Dakotas, and we see uh, a lot of special sales, a lot of cows coming to town. Those probably aren't getting redistributed mm -hmm. uh, in other parts of the country. We're seeing a lot of, of, of cows just going to go away. So are we, are we speeding up mm -hmm. that process of, uh, of getting back to a smaller numbers? Absolutely true. And, and the real uncertainty now is you know, how, how much will that ex ex maintain or accelerate through the summer? But in the last four to six weeks, we, have, we saw just a, like a 12 to 15,000 head weekly increase in non-fed slaughter. And, and that's predominantly beef cows. Uh, dairy cow slaughter pretty much uh, the normal. Um, so, so um, I think we, I think we are seeing that acceleration. Where I would where I would see any differences at all is most of those cows are directly associated with the drought in the West. But if you take the increased cost to producers in the Southeast with increased fertilizer cost, increased management cost, I think if there's a surprise, it's the number of Southeast cows we're seeing in that mix as well. Okay. Don Close, uh, Rob Agra Finance is joining us. Let's take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk uh, demand and, and where all this beef is going. We'll do that in just a moment. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by the Kansas Livestock Association, supporting members' business interests and meeting consumer demands. KLA.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil specific seed. Find them on the web at oldeseed.com. That's O-H-L-D-E-Seed.com. And Kansas Corn, building the future at kansascorn.com. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. 
The Oldie Seed Know to Grow program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. And Don Close, Senior Vice President of Food and Ag Research with the uh, uh, animal protein sector with Rob Agrofinance is joining us. And uh, uh, Don, we've been talking about, you know, the, the cow numbers and what's going on. Uh, uh, we do see though, uh, box beef numbers are high and demand seems to be uh, high, uh, not only uh, uh, here it's starting to come back, but the globally, let's take a, maybe a bite of both of those. Uh, COVID seems to be now those restrictions going away, food service coming back. But uh, overseas really likes U.S. beef. It, it has been nothing short of phenomenal. And uh, as, you, as you said, we, we've had incredibly strong retail demand for the full year. But now that we're getting the, the build back of, them, of the pipeline inventories for the hotel and restaurant sector and people returning to restaurants at pulling from that inventory, uh, it it has been phenomenally good. You know, part of that part of that whole explanation is con U.S. consumers' disposable income has been at all-time record levels, and that's been driven twofold: a, from the amount of government stimulus money that's in the economy has certainly helped, but it's also with that year of staying at home, we we weren't buying as much gasoline, we weren't buying fifteen to twenty dollar business lunches out. We weren't, uh, had, you know, no entertainment outside the house, no wardrobe updates. And so that additional cash that wasn't being spent elsewhere enabled consumers to eat better at home. And, and now that we've been in that pattern and, and everybody, the, the level of cabin fever that existed after the year at home, everybody's eager to get out. Uh, so, yeah, that's been a driver. Uh, international markets uh, also, we've seen some uh, pick up that uh, we thought maybe were lost or weren't near as strong uh, uh, just uh, maybe 18 months ago. Yeah, you know, the, uh, the export front equally is good and it, a really simple answer. It's China. You know, that we've got a market that was just approved in June of 2017 and now suddenly they're our third largest customer of U.S. beef. If you add to that, the shortfall of production that's going on in Australia as they try to recover from the severity of drought, and then you take Brazil just simply oversubscribed how much product they could deliver in our tightening inventories, that places that global market towards the U.S. And, and that's one we think will, will uh, be sustained. Before we let you go, let's talk about JBS and some of the other companies uh, out with uh, how they're going to reduce greenhouse gases over the next couple of decades. Uh, what does that mean for the future of the uh, of the beef industry? I actually think you know there's there's a misunderstanding, and and we have this debate between the greenhouse gas emission or methane emissions from confined animal feeding to animals out on grass. And the truth of the matter is that confined concentrated feeding concentrated rations has a lower greenhouse gas emissions than the conventional grass fed animal. So I think that that will all when science is is rules, that will be positive. But the whole the whole uh, greenhouse gas and uh, carbon neutralization, I think with so many companies committing to be carbon neutral by XXX, whatever year. But, and the only place to go to that is agriculture and, and sinking carbon into the soil. I think the demand for those carbon credits will grow to a point where it's finally quite beneficial for US agriculture. Well, we look forward to seeing how that continues to develop, Don. As always, great to talk to you. Appreciate your insights. And uh, I'm sure we'll talk again as we continue to navigate through this cattle market. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you.
Don Close, who is a Senior Vice President for Food and Ag Research for Animal Protein with Rabobank Agrofinance, has joined us. Stay with us. We'll have more coming up. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com. Do you ever wonder how soy fits into the global food space? It has an important place in human nutrition around the world, serving as feed for animal protein and as plant-powered nutrition on its own. The World Initiative for Soy and Human Health, WISH for short, partners with the American Soybean Association and National Soybean Checkoff to build soy's customer base and cultivate global relationships with buyers along the way. Throughout June, WISH hosted several webinars focused on global food security and safety. The June 15th Animal Feed Safety in Developing and Emerging Markets, sponsored by the Kansas Soybean Commission, featured a welcome from Commission Chairman Bob Hazelwood. Hazelwood serves on the WISH Program Committee as a farmer representative. Carlos Campobadal, Outreach specialists at the International Grains Program Institute spoke during the webinar on understanding feed safety hazards in a feed mill, pointers on implementing a feed safety plan, and best practices for mitigating risk. IGP Institute is part of the Grain Science and Industry Program at Kansas State University. Laura Francisco of Kansas Protein Foods spoke during a separate WISH webinar to share about the line of soy texture protein manufactured and sold by Kansas Protein Foods. This healthy and functional food trends, marketing and opportunities with U.S. soy ingredients webinar was geared towards Central American buyers. To see more of WISH's program successes, check out www.wish.org. What if sustainability were synonymous with U.S. soy? If energy efficiency, water quality, and soil health help define U.S. soy's value. That future is here, the time is now. To meet end user demands, the Soybean Checkoff is committing to sustainability that's achievable, worthwhile, and enduring. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Every day, farmers and ranchers see the beauty of Kansas agriculture surrounding them while they work to bring quality products to our table. That beauty can't be fully captured with a camera, but we encourage you to try in the Kansas Department of Agriculture's annual photo contest. I'm Heather Lansdowne, Director of Communications at KDA, and I'm excited to share this year's photo contest categories, which were selected to promote different aspects of Kansas agriculture. The four categories are Rural Kansas, Celebrating Local Foods, Kansas Weather, and Water in Kansas. These categories will showcase the many places and ways we experience agriculture across the state of Kansas, from the beauty of the Flint Hills and the Western Plains, to the family-run local ranches and colorful farmer's markets, and the many ways that weather and water have an impact on Kansas agriculture. In addition, there's a separate youth division for young photographers under age 19. And this year, for the first time, the KDA Photo Contest includes a video category. Send us your drone footage, harvest videos, or other short clips of under 30 seconds that showcase Kansas agriculture. Entries for the photo contest are being accepted from now through August 16th. In September, all the entries will be posted on KDA's social media. Winners of the KDA Photo Contest will be chosen by votes on social media platforms and by leaders in Kansas agriculture. Winners in each category will receive prizes, and a few of the top photographs will be selected to be displayed here in the KDA building in Manhattan. Guidelines for the contest can be found at agriculture.ks.gov slash photocontest. I look forward to seeing this year's entries and to finding ways KDA can share the photos all year long as we tell the story of Kansas agriculture. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. 
Kansas Sorghum recently headed south of Eisenhower's hometown of Abilene to discuss leadership with its local commissioner. I'm Kevin Harris and I'm uh, serving on the Kansas Grain Sorghum Commission Board. I think these commissions set the standard for what will happen with the industry, with markets, with expanding new markets, looking at other sources to use our grains. One of the things we got involved with is we had some international groups come to the farm here. We have groups from Mexico and from China here at the farm and, and that was exciting and then I through that made good contact so it's been uh, been good to be on it. Markets are fantastic right now. It, it, we always do some pre-marketing, we always forward marketing some and these are one of the years that you kind of wish you wouldn't have done any yet we're still capturing some of the, the markets that are out there all, all profitable at the levels they're at right now. I've grown grain sorghum for a number of years probably ever since I started farming I've grown grain sorghum. There's nothing like the hands-on experience that you get from doing it. We need good young people that are out here farming. There's, there's some really good young guys out here. My son and others are, that are around our area that I'm pretty excited that they're able to do it. Of course, they're all busy just trying to make a living, but they're uh, really excited when they get, get involved with both their community organizations, but also get on some statewide organizations. And then to, to you know, the miracles of putting seed in the ground and, and it producing abundantly is, is just, uh, I, I can't top it. We know that what we do here makes a difference in a lot of lives all over the world. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. A 1,540-pound steer fed at Sunbelt Feed Yard of Hugoton by Dale and Carol Warren was named the overall winner of the Beef Empire Days Fed Cattle Show in Garden City. The Angus Cross steer placed first live and fourth in the carcass contest, graded low prime, and was a yield grade 2.85 to earn the Earl C. Brookover Memorial Award for the highest finishing animal of the show. The grand champion overall heifer was fed at HRC Feed Yards of Scott City by Suretop Angus and Charlay. This heifer weighed 1,362 pounds live, was fifth in the live show, fourth in the carcass contest, graded middle choice, and was a yield grade 1.59. JCS, GP, and Frank Harper fed the steer hanging the Grand Champion carcass at Midwest Feeders of Ingalls. The 1,678-pound steer graded low prime and was a yield grade 2.15. Sublette Feeders fed the Champion carcass heifer, which was owned by Max Barkley. The heifer weighed 1,292 pounds live, graded low prime, and was a yield grade 1.75. American Hereford Association Chief Operating Officer and Director of Breed Improvement Shane Bedwell judged the live show. The carcass contest was judged by Kansas State University Meat Sciences Professor Travis O'Quinn. A total of 70 steers and 41 heifers competed in the event. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Good morning, I'm Darren Van Vatter with Pinion, a division of Keiko Isom. It appears the forecasted rains over the next week and quiet export numbers is enough to keep the bulls on the sideline for now. Most crop conditions deteriorated over the last week before the rains hit. Now with more rain in the forecast, potential improvement holds more water than the crop progress reports themselves. China was back in the market this week buying new crop soybeans on the biggest break we've seen this year, helping buoy the beans for now. We're still in a weather market, however the forecast of moisture is keeping a lid on things as we approach the June 30th report due out Wednesday. Many in the trade expect corn and bean acres to work higher. While this is possible, it will be interesting to see what they do with trendline yield. Many key production states have suffered from a lack of moisture, and if fringe acres are pulled into the mix, 
will their yield potential be weighted as heavily as historically high yielding acres? To throw in another kink, grain stocks will be updated yet again. Nicely said, this report will be as predictable as the weather, and you have about the same amount of control. The markets have made some abrupt moves here recently. We have moved from extremely profitable levels to very profitable levels, giving producers opportunity. If you'd like to discuss some, please give us a call here at 888-452-8751. I'm Darren Van Vactor. Be safe and have a great week. Well, that's our show. It is harvest time around the state of Kansas. There's going to be more farm equipment than usual right now. So do take an extra minute because it's payday for Kansas farmers. Be social with us online at kansasagreport.net or on our social media channels. I'm Ken Rogers. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week on the Kansas Ag Report. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com.